at Wrigley Field tonight, there is a baseball game to be played, but foremost on the minds of everyone in baseball is the tragic passing of 24-year-old Jose Fernandez, one of the game's great young talents. He has been recalled at every ballpark at which there's been a game played today, and that is the case as well here at Wrigley. His number 16 up on the scoreboard beside Miami in a game, of course, that was canceled, that was not played this afternoon. Hi everybody and welcome to Wrigley Field in Chicago. I'm Dan Schulman. The Cardinals and the Cubs are coming up shortly. But as mentioned, top of mind for everyone around baseball is the loss of Jose Fernandez. Fernandez and two of his friends were killed in the early hours of the morning in a boating accident off Miami Beach. He has been remembered all day long as one of the great young stars of baseball. But as much for his personality, his youthful exuberance, and the life that he brought to the sport of baseball in his short time in the major leagues. Here at Wrigley Field, before the game tonight as was the case at every stadium in which a game was played today his memory was honored his life was celebrated and there was a moment of silence for Jose Fernandez here in Chicago moments ago at this time please join us in a moment of silence as we remember Jose Fernandez He certainly left his mark on those he played with those he played against and those he just knew in passing over his short time he had that kind of a personality and he will be missed terribly and our condolences go to the Marlins organization the baseball community and of course to the friends and family the loved ones of Jose Fernandez most of all for more on Fernandez let's go down to field level here's Buster Olney. joy was the word that Marlins manager Don Mattingly used to describe Jose Fernandez a perfect word and we saw that when the Marlins played their historic game at Fort Bragg this summer before that game Jose swapped stories with soldiers he signed autographs and when there was a national anthem flyover he pulled out his phone and recorded helicopters and after that he ran up to me he said look I got it all and I said you got to put that on social media someplace and Poppy I don't know how to do that you do it and he handed me his phone what we'll remember about Jose Fernandez is his smile that day and every day and his joy Dan Buster thank you well said uh, I remember on that day what that moment was like and again you, if you just came into contact with Jose Fernandez it was not something you quickly forgot absolutely not he was so full of life and he had a strength that allowed him to just own who he was and because of that he influenced so many around him and especially Cuban players and for the Cardinals, Aledmus Diaz, he grew up down the street in Cuba from Jose Fernandez. And I remember earlier this year when he first got the call up, Jose Fernandez was one of the first people he called because he felt like he perfectly exemplified the kind of player that he wanted to be. One of the prayers that I have for my children is that they choose to do something in their life that they're passionate about, that they love. And along the way, they spread some joy with that gift Jose Fernandez epitomized that. He played with passion, he played with joy, and a lot of people got to experience his gift. And on a very sad day today, I will remember that. Yeah, a terrible loss today as Jose Fernandez passes away at the age of 24, and as we've mentioned, remembered in all ballparks around baseball today. The Cubs remembering one of the ways they're showing their thoughts toward Jose Fernandez and his family hanging a jersey with his number 16 a cup jersey in their dugout which will be on display throughout the game tonight and there will be a game tonight the Cardinals and the Cubs when we come back.
by Taco Bell. Grab any $5 box at Taco Bell and you could win PlayStation to VR. And in part by the all-new Audi A4 and AARP, real possibilities. It's the Cardinals and the Cubs in a very big game for St. Louis as they try to get to the postseason again. Battling the Giants and the Mets for the two wild card spots in the National League. Sunday Night Baseball on ESPN is presented by Taco Bell. The Giants lost the Mets won 17 to nothing by the way over the Phillies so right now the Cardinals and the Giants in a virtual tie Cardinals have played two fewer games they will either be a half game up or a half game back of the Giants after the game tonight the Mets right now in possession of the top wild card spot in the National League and of course uh, the Cubs have the best record in the sport and they have clinched home field through the National League playoffs John Lester on the mound for the Cubs tonight 18 and four. With a sparkling 236 ERA and having a great second half, Matt Carpenter steps in to lead it off. As good as Lester has been, he's been even better lately. He sure looks like he's going to be the game one starter for the Cubs heading into the postseason. Only his teammate, Kyle Hendricks, has a better ERA in baseball. And a swing and a miss by Carpenter. 0 oh, and 2 is not having any fun. Against the Chicago Cubs this year. As good as Carpenter is, he's just 7 for 65 against Cub pitching on the season. Lester out in front, 0 and 2. Field in Culbreth is the home plate up tonight. He's also the crew chief. And Carpenter fouls it back into the second deck off to our left. After Carpenter, Stephen Piscotti, and then Johnny Peralta. The Cubs winning on Friday afternoon. The Cardinals coming back with a much needed win yesterday afternoon. Not too many days left on the calendar for Mike Matheny and the Cardinals in what appears to be certainly three teams battling for two spots. Cardinals try to extend a streak. If they make the postseason, it'll be six years in a row that they will qualify for the playoffs. But it has not been easy for them this year. A, a real rash of injuries. Both on the pitching staff and on the position players side and Mike Matheny used the phrase revolving door when we spoke with him before the game today they've been it seems in a constant state of flux one two is a fastball just outside 40 thousand umpires disagreed with that call but Lester who will express his displeasure with a call that he doesn't think and goes so his way. Matt Carpenter yeah. he's got a great eye especially with two strikes but you're going to see Lester really try to own that away side of the plate for a lot of these left handed batters down and away and from 0 and 2 to a full count now on Carpenter 377 on base percentage on the season Looking into David Ross getting the signs, has the one he wants. Here comes the 3 2. And it's a check swing, kind of a half swing foul off by Carpenter. Well, they intended to go back to that outside corner that Jess was talking about, a missed spot there, but it actually even crossed up Carpenter. All the pitches have been to that outside part of the plate, whether it be the cut fastball or the four seam fastball. That one ran back in a defensive swing, but lives to see another pitch. 3 2 again eighth pitch of the at bat and Carpenter lifts a fly ball to left field. Lots of room for Chris Bryant and that's the first out of the night. Let's take a look now at the St. Louis Cardinals lineup tonight presented by Taco Bell. Who's really led this offense especially in the second half has been Yadier Molina 355 batting average since the all star break that's third in baseball. And then Randall Grichik has been their hottest hitter as of late 309 batting average and four home runs in the month of September. With a one down, here's Steven Piscotti, a talented young right fielder for the Cardinals. The Cardinals got the bats going yesterday afternoon as they scored 10 runs in the game, and Piscotti had a big day. He had three hits, including a home run. That's out on, 22nd of the season. Out on to Waveland Avenue, yep. a real bomb yesterday afternoon. Pops this one up. And Rizzo drifting back. Who's going to take charge? It'll eventually.
be Zobrist as Zobrist thought Rizzo was going to take it, and then Rizzo eventually assumed Zobrist had it, and the second baseman took charge. Well, we've got some threatening weather in the area. Maybe that wins. I've been watching it for the last couple hours. It's kind of swirled a little bit, but I think this is nothing more than a little miscommunication. That's normally the second baseman's ball all the way. Rizzo probably just waiting to hear Zobris call for it. And finally, they got on the same page to record the second out. Wind has been gusting at times out to left field. At times, it's calmed down. But as Aaron said, there is a threat of weather later on this evening here in Chicago. Two down, and the base is empty for Johnny Peralta, the third baseman. Peralta checks the swing and he takes a strike. And that's now back to back pitches, Dan. The cut fastball got the lazy pop up to the right side to the inside part of the plate. And there, a four seam fastball that he dots on the inside corner. The command of that pitch is why he's been so dominant in the second half of the season as we take a look at his repertoire of four and two seam fastball, low mid 90s. A changeup that he doesn't throw a lot. The cut fastball is a huge weapon for him, especially to the right handed hitters. And there's the curveball that really is not a nasty pitch, but it serves as kind of a changeup because he pitches so well to the inside part of the plate with the four seam fastball and the cutter. So it it makes the right handed hitters conscious with hard in. And it makes that curveball, albeit not nasty, a difficult pitch to deal with. And he went back to that curveball again, but Peralta held up, takes it low, and the count is two balls and two strikes. Ross slides to the inside and missing inside with that cut over the knees. It's a full count now on Peralta. Peralta started the year on the DL, coming back from thumb surgery and had a thumb injury later on during the year too probably related to the original problem so he has missed some time still trying to get the power stroke back. He's swinging the bat pretty well in terms of contact and getting base hits recently but the power has not returned. Three two and a chopper foul. At times Matt Holiday of course when for so many years occupied the three spot for the Cardinals Piscotty hit there for a while. This year, but now he's hitting second. Holiday is still out with a thumb injury of his own. There's Matt Holiday. Took some BP yesterday. Felt some discomfort in the thumb. We'll have an X-ray back in St. Louis tomorrow, and they'll evaluate after that whether he's going to be able to return during the final week of the regular season. Three-two again, and a ground ball to short. Scooped up by Addison Russell. That's a three-up, three-down in. Cardinals go in order. The Cubs coming up when we come back. And a, a young Cubs fan excited for his first ball game here at Wrigley, hoping his team can win its 99th game of the season. No score going to the bottom of the first, and here's the Chicago lineup presented by Taco Bell. 
We're going to highlight two of the leading MVP candidates and perhaps the leading MVP candidate. Chris Bryant in that two hole, second in the National League with those 38 home runs and leads all NL players with 119 runs scored. And then Anthony Rizzo, Mr. Clutch in the middle of the lineup, over 100 RBIs and 42 doubles and a tough out in big spots. On the mound tonight for the St. Louis Cardinals, right hander Carlos Martinez having a great year, 15 and 8 with a 316 ERA. And a guy who, going forward, if St. Louis makes it into the wild card game, perhaps beyond, figures to pitch some very important games for the Cardinals. He has a big arm. On the left, you see JF, Jose Fernandez, 16. Martinez and Fernandez were friends. And on the other side of his cap, you see OT, 18, Oscar Tavares, who was Martinez's closest friend in baseball. Tavares, of course, the former outfielder for the Cardinals. Who tragically passed away in an automobile accident a couple of years ago. So Martinez can relate to what Aledemis Diaz is feeling tonight. Diaz, an incredibly close friend of Jose Fernandez. They grew up on the same street together in Cuba. And as Mike Matheny told us before the game, I mean Martinez and Fernandez had a had a good friendship. Martinez can be a very emotional guy. Mike Matheny says he's learning how to harness that emotion, but there's got to be a lot of the mind of Carlos Martinez as he takes the mound tonight. Having learned in the wee hours of the morning, like so many people did, that Jose Fernandez had passed away as Fowler draws a leadoff walk. And just before the game began, Carlos Martinez took it one step further and put the number 18 for Oscar Tavares and the number 16 for Jose Fernandez on the back of the mound. Obviously pitching with a very heavy heart and in what's a, another huge ball game for the St. Louis Cardinals and the rest of the way it will be a lot of big games and he has become the ace of this Cardinals pitching staff. Here's Chris Bryant batting second and playing left field tonight normally of course a third but has played a lot of left and has played a fair bit of right as well very versatile guy. First pitch swinging off the chest of Jerko and as a result they will only get one and it's another example of a play where there's no error on the play because you can't assume a double play but the Cardinals don't make a play they really need to make. Yeah and this is the biggest difference between these two clubs the Cubs outstanding defensively in the infield and it's been a challenge for the Cardinals all season long. This is a tailor made double play ball sharply hit off the bat. And I think Jerko just gets a little stale in his feet meaning he doesn't keep moving his feet and that hop kind of gets the best of him. He does a good job of not panicking at least getting the force run. But that's a ball that's got to be a double play especially in these critical games now down the stretch. We saw a lot of that on Friday afternoon where the Cubs got four in the first and a couple of them quite frankly were gift runs because there were some tough plays but the Cardinals just weren't able to make any of them. The Cubs as you say are, are an outstanding defensive team and the Cardinals rank near the bottom in a number of defensive metrics. Here's Anthony Rizzo having a great year as you can see from the numbers. Top 10 top six if you will in so many key offensive categories and Joe Madden said before the game if he were asked to choose between Bryant and Rizzo as to who is the team's most valuable player he wouldn't be able to do that they you know Bryant's a little better at this Rizzo's a little better at that and they both have meant so much obviously to the fortunes of the Cubs this year. Rizzo with 31 home runs 42 doubles and 105 runs driven in. And you can understand why Joe Madden says how could I pick between them. <laughs> as good a combo perhaps as there is in baseball as Rizzo who crowds the plate takes inside ball three. And one thing Joe Madden talked about for as great as the de infield defense is for the Cubs Rizzo's perhaps the biggest part of that tremendous at defensively at first base. Tremendous around the bag in the dirt with poor throws. 
Broken bat pop up towards shallow right and caught by Jerko going back and making it over the shoulder catch for the second out. He's delivered in the clutch, whereas Bryant more of a runs the bases a little bit better, more speed. Obviously, the versatility playing a lot of different positions this year, but you see that broken bat as Martinez was able to get in the kitchen, and Jerko does a good job of ranging, keeping his eyes on it. Looks like he might even be calling it. Nice little over the shoulder catch for the second out of this inning. You see. Martinez able to really get in the kitchen of Rizzo and that's where you can beat Rizzo if you can get around the belt and on the hands and located on that inside corner that's a vulnerable spot but that's a difficult thing to do certainly three times in a particular bat but 12 times over the course of a full game it's tough to locate that many pitches in that spot. Here's Ben Zobras, first year with the Cubs, signed a four year deal as a free agent in the offseason, having a very nice, very typical Ben Zobras kind of year. Very productive, drawing a ton of walks, playing a number of positions, a lot of second base for the Cubs. Has also played a fair bit of left and right, switch hitter as well. As he bats with two down in the first, runner at first, no score. Here on the Sunday night or the final game of this series between the Cardinals and the Cubs. Who of course could meet again in the postseason if the Cardinals can get there and win the wild card game. The Cubs will play the winner of the wild card game. These two teams met in a division series last year when Mike Matheny's Cardinals came in having won 100 games. Joe Madden's Cubs had won 97 to beat the Pirates in the wild card game and then knocked the Cardinals out, beat them in the division series before losing to the Mets in the NLCS. Up the middle and off the umpire. As the second base on CB Bucknor could not get out of the way of that and that's going to go as a base hit runners at first and second and Buckner fortunately well he's grimacing obviously he's got to be in some pain but hopefully it's nothing too serious. This is a pitch a fastball after the changeup right down the middle and Zobris just clocks it right off what looks like the leg. of a chance to get out of the way. CB did all he could, but that ball was rocketed off the bat of Ben Zobris. Hopefully he is okay. Wonder if he can walk it off uh, and continue. That got him. That got him pretty flush. Well, and immediately after he kind of his leg almost kind of gave out for a second. I think that's probably the biggest concern. Fielding Culbreth, the home plate umpire and a crew chief, over to check on him. Looks like CB says he's going to be able to continue. Not a lot he could do. That ball got out to him in a hurry. He tried. To his credit, as soon as he got up, he made the call, too, before yeah. uh, the pain kind of got to him. You wonder if he did anything coming down, if he yeah. strained anything, or if it was just the getting hit flush with the baseball. That's yeah. a, so he's going to stay in yep. and that, that's something you will certainly for the rest of the night if he's able to stay in he'll probably just want to keep moving around on it because yeah. I'm sure once he sits down and once the day's over yeah. it's one of those things that can really swell up on you. Yeah he could have a little golf ball down there by the uh, by the end of the night but so far he is going to stay in the game and tough it out after he got hit hard by that shot off the bat of Ben Zobris. So credit Zobris with a base hit Bryant to second two down in the inning and the batter is Addison Russell the young shortstop for the Cubs who has driven in 93 runs on the season hitting 244 with 21 homers. And he takes a strike. 99 miles an hour and this is where Martinez is so tough against right handed hitters. He's got that two and four seam fastball that he can go mid to upper 90s. But it is a wipeout slider. 
to these right handed hitters. Chopper to short. Jerko shovels underhand to force Zobrist, and that'll be the inning. The Cubs leave a couple of men on. No score at the end of one. to their first 100 win season since 1935 and that is a goal of this team Joe Madden talked about it before the game they've got other goals that they hope to fulfill in the month of October no score going to the top of the second here on Sunday night baseball and Brandon Moss steps in and takes outside ball one from John Lester Moss getting the start at first base tonight 27 home runs on the season and he's tied for the club lead in that regard with Jed Jerko Moss though has been scuffling for the most part lately he had a one for 41 rut and since then has had a good game here a good game there but has still not swung the bat like he did at times through the middle portion of the year as he hits a ground ball directly at Zobris the second baseman. Well, as we talked about off the top of the show, and as uh, no doubt you have seen all day long on Sports Center and baseball tonight, baseball is mourning the loss of the great young Marlins pitcher Jose Fernandez. Rob Manfred, the commissioner of baseball, coming out with a statement early this morning and saying, quote, all of baseball is shocked and saddened by the sudden passing of Marlins pitcher Jose Fernandez. He was one of our game's great young stars who made a dramatic impact on and off the field since his debut in 2013. And I think the off the field part is something uh, that bears a bit more discussion. He was a a huge a huge part of the Miami community left a, a huge influence in the, the Miami community with kids in the Cuban American community uh, and amongst his peers his colleagues. It's it's a pretty small fraternity Major League Baseball but I think the impact that Fernandez left in Miami in just four years there is not something to be taken lightly and how young he was and everything that he had gone through it I think is a big reason why he was able to be in that position of, of being a leader at such a young age defecting after three tries successful his fourth try the, the relationship he had with his family how close he was how hard that was for him and just his ability to be able to then lead play the way that he did the talent that he had and then do everything he did within the community it's unbelievable and when people talk about his exuberance and his personality 
he was that. He loved baseball, and baseball loved him. And you could see in his face where, where, whether he was pitching or whether he was a teammate in the dugout cheering on whoever was pitching that night. He was the first guy to hop over the railing, the first guy out on the field. As Molina sends a ball to deep right center, and it's off the ivy on the fly. Molina on his way to second and in there with a double. Molina hitting over 350 since the All Star break, and that hot hitting continues. Well, Yadier Molina, as you mentioned, comes in incredibly hot in the second half of the season, and it's a cut fastball that they want to backdoor, but it just catches a lot of the plate, and this is something that Yadi's done so well throughout his career, but especially here in the second half, using the entire field, and this ball's really driven to right center field, and a scoring opportunity now in the second inning off of John Lester for the Cardinals. It's an 11 game hitting streak now for Molina. And they've got a runner in scoring position with one down on the top of the second for Jerko. 27 home runs for Jerko this year and fewer than 400 at bats. The Cardinals can hit some home runs. They lead the National League in home runs. They are third in the league in runs scored. The problem for them, defense has been a problem. They've had some base running issues at times as well. They haven't been a great fundamental team this year, and the pitching has not been quite as good as I think they hoped and expected it would be. Some of that is injuries. They've had a lot. Lance Lynn never threw a pitch this year. Jordan Walden, who would have been a key reliever out for uh, much of the season, and other pitchers who could have contributed, like Tyler Lyons and Marco Gonzalez and Tim Cooney. I mean, all of them lost for the year. And Adam Wainwright not having a typical Adam Wainwright kind well, of. Well, think about last year when they did win 100 games. Their rotation was very similar to what the Cubs have done this year. You know, all those guys in the twos and ERA making their starts the whole entire year. This year, it's been a much different story. Well, they had one of them, too. They had John Lackey on their team. And you yeah. think about Lance Lynn, who went down with Tommy John. Those are two key cogs that gone either to another team or by injury. And David Ross, who is the personal catcher for John Lester is going to head out to the mound. Ben Zobrist will come in from second as well. Now the postseason not that far away. A week from Tuesday, October the 4th, the American League Wild Card game. You can see it on TBS. And the night after that, Wednesday the 5th, the National League Wild Card game that we will have for you here on ESPN. Will it be in San Francisco? Will it be in New York? Will it be in St. Louis? The Cubs will be interested in where it is and who's playing. They'll get the winner. Interesting to watch that trip to the mound there for Ross. Was that maybe switching up the signs? You've got obviously two very familiar teams Yadier Molina, a veteran player, a guy who knows a thing or two about put the fingers down from behind home plate. You saw Zobris run in just to make sure if it was something. If they were switching up signs. A strike right on the outside edge of the knees, and now the count runs full. Well, this is a perfectly located pitch. Jerko thought it was maybe down the way, but you see it catches the bottom of the strike zone and right on the corner, just a perfectly executed pitch on a 3 1 count. Certainly nothing that Jerko could have done anything with. Molina, it's second one down. And now the 3 2. And the breaking ball is pulled foul. He's gone to that curveball a few times. Well, we talked about the wild card race. The Cardinals are in it, the Giants and the Mets as well. The Mets won today. They beat the Phillies. Get ready for this 17 to nothing. The Giants lost to the Padres 4 to 3. So right now, the Mets are in sole possession of the first wild card spot, and the Cardinals and Giants are both a game back but of course St. Louis will either move up a half game or down a half game after the result of this one. Swing and a miss two down. Here's how the Giants lost today a team that had the best record in baseball at the All Star break even better than the Cubs have had a dismal second half and this is Will Myers bouncing one into right field an RBI single that gave the Padres a four to three lead in the bottom of the seventh and they would hang on to win by that score. Giants were 57 and 33 at the All Star break. They are 25 and 41 since. And watching them last night with the amount of runs they scored, Romo coming in 
to get the save. I thought, all right, maybe this is the corner they need. Randall Gritchick, first pitch swinging, fly ball left field, and that's the end. The Molina double is stranded at second. We'll go to the bottom of the second at Wrigley, no score. by Taco Bell. No score between the Cardinals and Cubs. As Jason Hayward, the right fielder for the Cubs, leads off the inning. Shows bunt, pulls the bat back, and he takes a strike. Hayward, in his first year with the Cubs, signed a, a big eight year deal in the offseason, has not had the kind of year swing in the bat he would like. Just 229, seven homers. A little bit better of late in his usual stellar defense in the outfield. But with the flexibility and versatility Joe Madden has, he is not. Tied to having Hayward play every single day. Brian can play out in right field. Solaire can play in right field. Zobris can play in right field. You get the idea. They can move people around and get the best matchups that he wants. For the most part, though, with Joe Madden, as Hayward lines when he left field a base hit, it starts with defense. To quote him, he said, I love defense. Defense is paramount. That's where it begins. That's where it begins for Joe Madden. And they're good at it. They're an athletic team. He emphasizes it, and that's how you wind up with what is by far statistically the best defensive team in baseball, depending on what numbers you look at. But defensive efficiency, defensive runs saved. The Cubs are leaving everybody else in the dust. The eyeball test. I like the eyeball test. I mean, they, you watch them play, and it's athleticism. They make the routine plays. Javier Baez has become that utility man that is a defensive whiz. And I think Chris Bryant's ability to move different places allows Javi Baez to get on the field more and impact the game. Tonight with Lester on the mound, more balls go to that pull side, so Baez at third base. Also, he's had a nice year with the bat with 13 home runs hitting down towards the bottom of the lineup. Now Joe Madden has numbers in his office when this pitcher pitches the ground balls tend to go here when this pitcher pitches they tend to go there. D.E.R. defensive efficiency the Cubs number one in baseball and look at the gap between them and number two the Cardinals are down to twenty four and the gap between one and two is bigger than the gap between two and twenty four. That's how big that's how good the Cubs have been defensively they turned seventy three point three percent of the balls in play. 
into outs by far the best ratio in baseball. It's kind of cool too when you, you sit in Joe's office and he goes through it's almost like a video game board what he's able to do with his defense based on the percentage of balls that are hit to certain positions and Javier Baez as you mentioned Booney is, is the main player in that video game when he sees the most amounts of ground balls that's where Baez is going to play. Skies a fly ball to left center deep but playable just shy of the track for Gritchick. This is just a perfect example of with John Lester and the Cubs are on defense the way that Joe Madden looks at where he wants his defense placed depending on the amount of ground balls and you can see bad balls this season against Lester within the infield. This is against all opponents. Look at that red zone right there to the left side of the infield and that's why Javier ba Baez who plays a lot of second base for this team will play third base when Lester's on the mound. Listen to this ovation. This is the Cubs final home game. What a moment for David Ross. Grandpa Rossi as he's known in these parts. The elder statesman in the Cub clubhouse and David Ross would never tell you he's David Ortiz and he certainly hasn't gotten going away presence at every ballpark on the visiting side but here in Chicago it's been it's been a party all season long and, and Rizzo and Brian have really embraced the Grandpa Rossi thing and the impact he's had on the young pitchers and all the position players on this team has been impressive. That is a great indication of the love affair that has developed between this fan base and all the different characters on this team. I mean that I thought it was an awesome moment too, seeing Yadier Molina yeah. you know the games one of the game's premier catchers for a long time walk out in front of home plate vacate his position and kind of let that moment happen a very fitting tribute between two veteran classy players 39 years of age Ross has announced he's retiring at the end of the season of course there are still playoff games to come here at Wrigley for Ross but tonight the final regular season home game for the Cubs and Ross an emotional guy a guy who gets choked up at stuff like this and you could see that when he stepped out of the box there was a ceremony before the game on Friday and he was a little bit emotional there and you can see that he's trying to keep it inside there there aren't many guys who get you know 200 at bats a season who get that kind of an ovation in their last at bat of the regular season in their home ballpark he's a special guy. Yeah there was an awesome that video tribute on, they mentioned on Friday was was a really nice tribute on the video sc screen his family out on the field Theo Epstein and Jed Hoyer and Tom Ricketts down there to present him with different gifts. David Ross is guys he's someone who constantly is self deprecating always refers to himself as a backup catcher like are you kidding that I have a moment like that and people treat me like this as he was talking the next morning about it he broke down in tears again. Two balls two strikes the count. And now full on Ross who as we mentioned is John Lester's regular catcher he's caught every Lester start this year but one. But going into the postseason the feeling is is he might play more than that he's a terrific catcher he's had a decent year with the bat he's got nine home runs in just 161 at bats and for sure he's going to catch Lester but the feeling is that Ross could catch some of the other cup starters as well. They've got a Wilson Contreras behind the plate and also Miguel Montero as well runner goes swing and a miss by Ross throw down off the glove of Carpenter as Hayward comes up with a stolen base. Well let's go back to Friday afternoon the ceremony we were mentioning as Ross was honored here the end of a 15 year career at the end of this season wife kids longtime friends teammates Cubs brass all on the field with them a member of the 2013 World Series champion Red Sox John Lester on that team as well Lester Rizzo out on the field and you can see you can see how much fun he was having and he was uh, he was a bit overcome at times with emotion during that ceremony and 
felt to me like maybe the the length and the and the noise of the ovation he got tonight might have took it, taken him by surprise a little bit. And you know, seeing that that's that's a part of the whole culture that Theo Epstein and Jed Hoyer and them are trying to build as well. That's a moment that not only obviously resonates with David Ross, but also other players around the league see that and see the way they're treating their players. That goes a long way in in the recruitment process and being tiebreakers for guys that are that are going to come sign with the team. And we see John Lackey who went from Cardinals to Cubs this offseason. But you get the sense being around this guys whether it's the stars or the 25th man. They love being here. Lester with a bouncer to end the inning. No score at the end of two. When we come back, we'll be joined by Eduardo Perez from our ESPN studios for some insight on the life of Jose Fernandez. For baseball, we extend our condolences to the families of Jose Fernandez and the two men who were with him when they perished in a boating accident early this morning off Miami Beach. A man who knew Fernandez well, uh, knew his family well, had many connections to Jose Fernandez. Eduardo Perez on the left, uh, a former Marlins coach, a current broadcaster with us, also broadcast games for the Marlins. You're looking at Fernandez on the right and Aledemis Diaz of the Cardinals. In the middle, uh, Diaz, of course, here tonight, and a close friend of Fernandez is growing up. They lived on the same street. Eduardo, on a very tough day for him, joining us from the studio, the Bristol studio back at ESPN. Eduardo, thank you for the time. We've seen you on a number of shows here today on a very tough day. When you think of Jose Fernandez today, what do you think of first? Well, Eddie, you, you mentioned the city of Miami. You live there, and how much did Jose Fernandez really exemplify the people, the persona, and they just really supported in Miami what he was able to do? How much did you see that on a day-to-day -day basis?
you know, a lot of people know the story of Fernando Mania that kind of took over the baseball world in the early 80s in Los Angeles. Can you tell, did, does it have that little, a little bit of a feel when, when Jose Fernandez was going to be towing the slab every fifth day in Miami? A remarkable 29 and 2 in his career. Most of the focus today, I think, is what Fernandez was off the field. On the field, of course, a tremendous talent. 29 and 2 at home in his big league career. Eduardo, our condolences again. We know the closeness of the relationship uh, of your family and the Fernandez family. And uh, for all of us who have been watching ESPN today, thank you for lending your time and insight and, and giving us a, uh, a closer, more of an inside look at Jose Fernandez. Eduardo Perez Carpenter is swing and a miss and the Cardinals are gone in order. We'll go to the bottom of the third at Wrigley still no score. Welcome back to Wrigley Field in Chicago. Sunday Night Baseball on ESPN. No score between the Cardinals and the Cubs as we go to the bottom of the third. Top of the order for the Cubs Dexter Fowler, Chris Bryant, and Anthony Rizzo. The Cubs 98 and 56 on the season. 56 and 24 here at home. And they know they will have off once the regular season is over they will have off until Friday they'll have four days off although they, they won't all be complete off days but four days with no games until they host game one of the division series here. 
a week from Friday against in all likelihood either the Cardinals Giants or the Mets. Joe Madden says Monday's a total day off and then it'll be some sim games and working on some almost like a mini spring training working on some bunt defense and some things just wanting everybody to stay sharp. Martinez working quickly misses up and away two and two and I think that's the biggest challenge for a for a team that's had the kind of year that the Cubs have for its team that is as well rounded as they are that four days off before the division series starts. Just trying to keep everyone sharp. Nasty slider there from Martinez to strike out Fowler, and that'll bring up Chris Bryant. Just his second year, rookie of the year last year, legitimate, maybe the front runner for the MVP here in his second season. He's driven in 99, he scored 119, he's got 38 home runs on the season. He plays a variety of positions, he runs the bases well, he's got pretty good speed. You name it, he does it. Well, it's also impressive because it's it's not a secret a lot of times how to pitch them. You know, obviously off the plate, fastball, a lot of off speed, and yet he still finds a way, even knowing whether it's fouling off a pitch that he usually can't hit very well in the changeup when it's located well, but he'll find a way to waste it and stay in it at bat. He's great plate coverage. He pulls the ball a lot, but he can hit the outside pitch for power to the left side of the field. Was it you who said, Jess uh, said on Friday he must be do a lot of wall sits to be comfortable in that kind <laughs> of a batting stance. I mean yeah. anyone try to stand up in their living room right now yeah. and go ahead and get in Chris Bryant's <laughs> batting stance for more than 10 seconds. Yeah. Watch your legs shake and that it just shows not only. But nothing wrong with that but look at Bryant barely even lifts his foot up to get into his stride position. Carlos Martinez missing just outside at 100 miles an hour with that fastball and now a full count on Brian. 3 2. Check swing and it misses a little bit inside for ball four. Sunday Night Baseball on ESPN presented by Taco Bell is brought to you by Otesla. Learn more at Otesla.com. And Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Push button, get mortgage. Dan Shulman, Jess Mendoza, Aaron Boone, Buster Olney, Sunday Night Baseball on ESPN. A runner at first, one out, no score. Bottom of the third, and here's Anthony Rizzo. Popped up his first time. Martinez got in on his hands and broke his bat. I'm interested to see the approach now Rizzo this is a guy that I mean he can almost be a chameleon as far as changing how he is as a hitter whether it's swinging for the fences because he has the power whether it's blooping in a base hit to left field situationally right now he got beat bad his last at bat inside so how he accounts for that especially with that front foot he's open and on the plate but see how he opens up that front side to get to that fastball in now he chokes up. Mm -hmm. From the beginning, really, and maybe more against a guy who throws 100, but now with two strikes, how does that change even more? Well, he chokes up even more so now. Mo he was doing it from the beginning because of the velocity, but he does it now because you're going to have a better ability to control the bat and get the barrel to the ball quicker because there's less of it. And, and there's so many things that go into how much he chokes up, when he does it. Who is he facing as a pitcher? What is the situation? Is it a situation where he's just trying to put the ball in play and that may get him a run? But as you can see, that slugging percentage with two strikes has continued to go, on, go up to 2016 over 400. But with the power pitcher on the mound with two strikes, he's going to choke up a bunch. Ground ball. The second one on the first double play. The Cardinals will turn it. That'll end the inning. Three completed Wrigley and still no score between the Cardinals and the Cubs.
no score going to the top of the fourth here at Wrigley uh, on a day of great sadness uh, across baseball following the passing early this morning of 24 year old Jose Fernandez before the game. We sat down with Joe Madden who reflected on the death of Fernandez. He uh, he just he embodies how it should be. Um, he has fun playing the game coming where he had come from in Cuba. Probably the adversity he had met to get here in the first place. He had great perspective. If I pray for one thing on a nightly basis is that perspective is not brought to me. Um, and I think he had that. Uh, it was a joy to watch play. And like I said, I, I really thought within the next year or two this guy would have won a Cy Young Award. He is definitely that good. He's that talented. So uh, uh, he, he went about his business the way you should go about your business on a baseball field. Some comments from Joe Madden on Jose Fernandez as Piscotti pops up for the first out and, and you know two things there the perspective that Joe Madden talked about because of what Jose Fernandez had to overcome if you haven't heard before today it was the fourth defection attempt that was finally successful for Fernandez and that fourth attempt came when he was only 15 years of age he and his mother tried to defect three previous times on the successful attempt the fourth attempt in rough water his mother was thrown overboard and Fernandez at the age of 15 had to jump into the water in the Gulf of Mexico get her and swim uh, from so the story goes a fairly considerable way to get back to the boat to get her back in the boat and save her as uh, let me Diaz who was on the left who as we mentioned grew up three doors down three houses away from Jose Fernandez and Brian Pena on the right another player from Cuba who spoke who always speaks eloquently and spoke eloquently before the game today about Jose Fernandez about the tight knit community that is uh, the Cuban baseball players in the major leagues. Jose Fernandez also he he loved being a part of Major League Baseball so much and he loved the freedoms that were afforded to him in the United States he became a citizen of the United States uh, just over a year ago back in the spring of 2015. Johnny Peralta the batter and the count two and two on him and originally when he did go into the Gulf to essentially save his mom he did not know it was his mom when he first dove into the water as we mentioned one of his closest friends in baseball led me Diaz how far back did they go this little league team in Cuba there's Diaz and there's Fernandez. And if you look at the facial expression on Jose Fernandez, how many times did we see that expression with him as a big leaguer? Just yep. as as Buster said so well in his pregame hit, joy. Joy was what always seemed to be uh, living strongly within Jose Fernandez. And the emotion and passion that he played with. I mean, he never veered away from who he was. And, and at only 24 years old, but even when he was younger, was the rookie of the year he he always showed exactly and had so much confidence in the person he was owned that all of the time and, and it just didn't know him for two minutes you felt like you know him because he never hid behind anything else. Brandon Moss can't check the swing and the count one and two on the Cardinal first baseman you know but with that passion with that joy with being incredibly comfortable. It felt like he always had a healthy respect for his opponents for his peers for his for the opposing team's fan base and that's something I, I thought he struck that balance so well as a player remembered before the game tonight here at Wrigley with a moment of silence as was the case at every game around the majors of course the Marlins game scheduled for today against Atlanta was canceled the Marlins will be home tomorrow night to the New York Mets in a game that Fernandez was to have started tomorrow night was to have been his start and the Marlins have announced they will play tomorrow night and one can only imagine what the emotion will be like at that ballpark tomorrow night. The 2 2 again. And Moss got a piece. A number of, well, so many, not a number, a tremendous number of Major League players going on social media, going on Twitter, and sending out tweets in memory of Jose Fernandez today, including John Lester, tonight's starter 
for the Chicago Cubs. David Ortiz, who had a tremendous fondness for Jose Fernandez, Mike Trout, and on and on. So many players uh, chiming in today with their thoughts and memories and condolences to the family of Jose Fernandez. And again, we should mention that three people perished this morning. Jose Fernandez, uh, not a lot of details last I saw before we came to the ballpark had been released, but Fernandez was on a boat in the early hours of the morning with two friends off Miami Beach. And the boat reportedly struck a jetty at high speed, flipped over, and all three people who were on board perished. And we send our condolences to all three families. Ground ball to Baez, and that's the inning. Three up, three down to go the Cardinals. No score going to the bottom of the fourth on a night where the game must go on, but the memory of Jose Fernandez is featured prominently. Action coming your way this week in the Major League Calendar. Tuesday night on ESPN2, it'll be the Red Sox and the Yankees. The Red Sox, the division leaders of the American League East, playing now for seeding and home field, perhaps. Indians and Tigers, then Rockies and Giants in a doubleheader on Wednesday on ESPN, and the Indians and Tigers again Thursday afternoon. The Tigers lost today 12 to 9 to Kansas City, so they lost ground because both the Blue Jays and the Orioles. We're victorious today. Baltimore defeating Arizona two to one a big win for the Orioles. And fly ball down the left field line of a twisting foul. Hyun Soo Kim hit a two run homer for Baltimore. Zach Britton save number forty six Baltimore two Arizona one. He's been incredible. He has unhittable. The Blue Jays and Yankees had a crazy game at Rogers Center. Where the Blue Jays got a home run from Jose Bautista, who's heating up to take a one to nothing lead. The Yankees came back to tie it. Blue Jays took a two to one lead. The Yankees got two in the top of the ninth, and then the Blue Jays got two in the bottom of the ninth to win it four to three. So Toronto is a game and a half ahead of Baltimore for the first wild card spot, and Detroit is a game and a half behind Baltimore for the second wild card spot in the American League. So things as interesting in that league as they are in the National League, and. Toronto and Baltimore have a three game series against one another starting Tuesday at Rogers Center which should be all kinds of interesting. It's going to be a fun week. It will be a fun week. And we know we'll be somewhere Friday to bring you a game but we don't know where. I'm thinking AL East somewhere. Yeah. With we, all that all that mess yeah. going on. <laughs> Here's Addison Russell. First pitch swinging ground ball to short up with a jerk up. And just like that two down. Really impressed with Carlos Martinez tonight. Obviously, pitching with a heavy heart. We talked about he can be an emotional guy, but he's done a very good job of really 
controlling the emotions. I thought last inning when he lost Bryant and felt like the prior the pitch prior he had him struck out. He came right back and pounded the strike zone with Rizzo got the double play ball. And he has been on point through three and two thirds against this very good Cub lineup. And you called him the ace of the staff yep. right. I mean he has grown into that role over the last couple of years where the production is starting to match the potential and uh, by starting tonight he will start later on this week one more regular season start. But if the Cardinals were to make the wild card game this is the guy who would figure to be on the mound. Jaime Garcia is going back into the rotation for the Cardinals came out Luke Weaver got a, some starts the last two didn't go well Garcia who had a couple of outings in the bullpen including a good four inning one against Colorado this week he'll go back in for a start tomorrow Adam Wainwright's going to start Tuesday for St. Louis and that'll line him up for the last day of the regular season or a tiebreaker potentially depending on how things go they got a they got a good effort from Alex Reyes who. Battled through five innings through I think 112 114 pitches command was a little bit off but uh, they're throwing Reyes into the fire right now they need everything that they can get from every arm they've got right now. Well, Reyes responds well every time he's been thrown in the fire I think it's the most impressive part of a young young pitcher. Another ground ball and a three up three down inning John Lester Carlos Martinez both having strong nights. The 2016 postseason begins October 4th. Go to MLB.com slash postseason for a full schedule. Underway here in the fifth inning. No score between the Cardinals and Cubs. A tremendously important game for St. Louis. They are a game back of the Mets for the first wild card spot, currently in a virtual tie with the Giants for the second wild card spot. The Giants will be home to Colorado this week before finishing up at home. To the Dodgers. And St. Louis will finish up with series against the Reds and the Pirates at home, where St. Louis has really struggled. 33 and 41. They've got a great road record, and they're way under 500 at home as Molina strikes out. And that's a tough out to get for John Lester. And the hardest ball hit tonight has been by Yadier Molina, the double that he hit off the wall. So Lester comes back and he throws actually a rare changeup before this. In that same hole, he hit the backdoor cutter off. Comes back with the curveball and gets Molina 
out in front. But you got to remember Molina, too, is one of the toughest batters to strike out. Usually pretty good at wasting any pitches. When he's deeper in the count. Jed Jerko fouls one off. You know, talking to Mike Matheny before the game, talking about going home tomorrow for that final homestand and knowing that those questions about their struggles at their home ballpark will will be what he has to answer tomorrow. And I, and I think it has a lot to do with this p team. Their overwhelming strength is their power and they play in more of a pitcher friendly ballpark that doesn't play up the home run. Well it's paramount that you catch the ball at a high level in those and we've seen them at times this year at even times tonight obviously just struggle to play high quality defense and, and I think that coupled with fewer home runs at home have led to that losing record at home. It's a very different Cardinal team than we've become used to seeing in recent years. Uh, the Cardinals always had a very strong pitching very good fundamentals for the most part did not have a lot of power. They were usually near the bottom in home runs the last few years but you know Brandon Moss and Jed Jerko uh, another year of experience for Grichik and Piscotty and, and they've got power up and down the lineup. They've got eight different players with 15 or more homers this year. The 2 2. But they're going to have to play well over the last week of the season to get into the postseason. Because the Mets, despite all their injuries, keep winning more than they're losing. As we mentioned, they blasted the Phillies today. The Giants continue to struggle for the most part as that ball's pulled foul. The Mets beat Philadelphia. 17 to nothing today. The the 17 will obscure the fact that they got another very good start. Robert Gazelman seven shutout innings. As Drupal Cabrera, who hit a dramatic home run for the Mets a few days ago, hit a grand slam today. Jose Reyes drove in four runs for the Mets today. Did he go? Yes, he did. Two down, six strikeouts now for Lester. So the Mets are a game in front of both the Cardinals and the Giants right now 23 and 11 with just about their entire starting rotation out of commission right now. The Cardinals eight games under 500 can they finish strong at home and win enough there to make the postseason in San Francisco the second worst team in baseball in the second half of the year after having the best record in baseball even better than the Cubs. At the All Star break. Remember, the Cubs had a 6 and 15 stretch going into the All Star break, yet they've still won 98 games on the season. What the Mets have done is, is really remarkable. And yeah, they had a so called easier schedule the last couple of weeks, but all that means is they had the tougher part of their schedule early. They shouldn't be penalized or criticized for having games against easier teams down the stretch. And, and 23 and 11. Yeah. That, that's a pretty nice. 34 game clip that's a that's playing at an incredibly high level and again highlighted by the fact that they're missing so much of their bonded staff Russell on the first in time to get Grichik and it's another three up three down inning for John Lester.
by Taco Bell is brought to you by Madden NFL 17. Take your team all the way. Rated E for everyone. A pitcher's duel tonight between John Lester and Carlos Martinez. No score going to the bottom of the fifth. Javier Baez, David Ross, and then Lester coming up for the Cubs. Baez hit a fly ball to center field his first time up, and he looks at a strike here to begin this inning. A guy who, as we've discussed, tremendous defensive player, second, short, third. Joe Madden loves him at second. But again, has him at third when John Lester's on the mound because most of the action or traffic, as Joe Madden says, the ground balls when Lester's in there tend to go more to the pull side to third. So Baez more likely to be at third when Lester's on the mound, maybe more likely to be at second when, say, a guy like Jake Arietta's on the mound, more traffic up the middle. And a guy who offensively has done a really nice job cutting down on the strikeouts over the last couple of years, raising the batting average. And becoming a, a very important player in the scheme of things for the Chicago Cubs. And a little uh, quick pitch action, or maybe mini wind up there from Carlos Martinez, and that ball jumped on Baez. Side two and two. Martinez has touched 100 miles an hour on a couple of occasions consistently between, say, 96 and 99 with a fastball tonight. Got him with a slider away. One down. Let's go to our greater coverage of baseball plays of the game brought to you by T Mobile. Dan, you mentioned Carlos Martinez is known for that high velo fastball, but earlier in the game he was having a harder time commanding it, kind of spraying it throughout the zone. But really, the key to him being the ace of this staff has been his slider. Both the lefties and righties, whether it's off the back foot, the left handed batters away from righties, that late movement that he gets on that pitch. That's what allows him to be that next level, and that was the same pitch he just struck out Baez on. How about this? For the second time tonight, David Ross gets a huge ovation, and Yadier Molina vacates his position to let it all marinate. They love David Ross here in Chicago. And you know how much he probably absolutely is like, would never want this. I mean, David Ross, because he has such a hard time controlling his emotions, you can tell he's trying so hard. Look what he just did. Look what he just did. Fashion goosebumps right there, isn't it? I, I didn't get that script. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> wow. wow, that's yeah. that's wow. two home runs now for David Ross this season against Carlos Martinez, who is incredibly tough on right-handed right-handed hitters have hit 205 and have a 262 slugging percentage. Maybe the first thing David Ross can do after he retires is star as himself in a Disney movie Seriously. or something like that. <laughs> Although I don't know if even he can script it better than he just did it. Two huge standing ovations, a lot of emotion during the first at bat. <laughs> and then Grandpa Rossi hit one out into the bleachers in left center in his second at bat to break the ice here at Wrigley. And Lester swings and misses. Two down. 
I think it was a, a, a slider that he picked on and it was. It just kind of hung up and out over the plate. And this is pretty much a no doubter. Ross knows right away he's able to stay back on it. You see it's elevated in the strike zone. And again, a very difficult pitcher to hit against as a right-handed hitter, but certainly for power. He had a fastball out at Bush Stadium earlier in the season and now picks on a hanging slider and there is the storybook season continuing for David Ross. And it's not just that they love him because he's a great guy and they do love him because he's a great guy. He's had a really good year. Yeah. Given the opportunities that he's been given and as we mentioned he figures potentially to be more than just John Lester's catcher in the postseason. Wilson Contreras the rookie is going to be on the postseason roster Miguel Montero as Fowler bounces went up the middle. Miguel Montero a veteran catcher swinging the bat better of late he's vying for a spot as well each catcher's kind of got a guy they have worked well with. But because guys like Bryant and Zobrist and Baez can play so many positions it's a lot easier for the Cubs to carry three catchers than it is for most other teams. I think they'll have three in the playoffs and Contreras is, is so versatile so his yep. ability to be able to play a really good left field and really all positions left and right specifically. Chris Bryant the batter as Fowler draws a throw. Now time for bringing it home brought to you by Quicken Loans. And look at how well these guys have been bringing it home. Three in the top ten in the National League in RBIs. Rizzo, Bryant, Russell. <laughs> Opportunities plus production. Now, now they're just showing a picture of Ross. It's gone now, but they were just showing a picture of Ross sitting in the dugout that picture right there up on the jumbotron and the place went nuts it's like the Beatles are here. <laughs> what do you think future future manager. I think future a lot of options. Yeah. I mean he could certainly you know he's worked with us already at ESPN. I'm sure a lot of organizations would love to have him join their front office. He'll get managerial opportunities. Well, it'll be interesting because I know talking to him about retirement, of course, not the same as Ortiz and people begging him to stay, but he's had a fair amount of that as well. One yeah. more year, can you stay? And the biggest thing he says is just family. He wants more time with his kiddos and his wife. Hey, you have seen the president. Of the Cubs on the left there the architect of this team in recent years the best team in baseball this year as they head into the postseason and look to try to do something that of course this franchise has not been able to do in more than a century and that's win the World Series haven't been to the World Series since 1945 Joe Madden says well you know the heck with curses I mean none of us were there back then and it certainly doesn't seem like Madden Epstein or any of the players are carrying the weight of curses or 1908 or anything like that on their backs into October they're about as loose a bunch as you will see. Two and two the count on Bryant a run in on the home run by Ross. Runner is going throw down by Molina is late and Fowler has his 11th stolen base of the season. Well Fowler was working hard the whole time over there and just trying to get that perfect lead trying to get the jump and you can see with a short delivery by Martinez Fowler gets an excellent jump and because the ball is on the inside part of the plate he's Yachty's got a transfer that ball all the way across his body you see as soon as he has that little bit of a bobble there's no chance to get Fowler a little surprised that he still went and threw it but a great jump by Fowler nonetheless. So runner in scoring position with two down for Brian looking for his 100th RBI on the season. 
And he takes just high ball four. A little concern on the face of Mike Matheny. As the first run is scored, and now two men on, two out. Before any more baseball, let's go back to the studio, get an update for the world of sports. Here's Chris Berman. Boomer, thank you. So the day begins with one of the great young stars of baseball, Jose Fernandez, being taken far too early. And here now on Sunday evening, as legendary a golfer, as successful and popular a golfer as there has ever been, and Arnold Palmer passes away at the age of 87. Anthony Rizzo, the batter for the Cubs. He has popped up and grounded into a double play. Two men on, two men out, and a run in for the Cubs. And Jesse, look at Anthony Rizzo in the box, usually so close to home plate, usually right up on that line. It looks like here he's backed off a little. We've seen Martinez. In his first two at bats, challenge him inside. The first pitch of this bat, challenging him inside. He's backed off just a little bit. One of those adjustments we talk about him that he makes all the time. So he's moved off the plate a little bit, and when you watch his front foot, so he starts with an open front side, and he's making that adjustment. He's looking, so now he's hunting in her half. He's looking for that fastball, or at least enough to not get. And the Cubs are on their toes as always. Fowler into third. Well, with Anthony Rizzo up and the shift on, you've got to be aware of this kind of thing. And Dexter Fowler s sensing an opportunity and recognizing that he could get in there with relative ease as Martinez kind of had his head down and he just sort of outruns Peralta to third. And there it looked like he climbed back on the plate yep. and choked up a bunch. And true to form, Molina calling for that pitch in. Martinez trying to stick that corner again. A hard pitch to die. And Fowler can come and did on the last pitch way down the line because of the shift. The crowd is loving what Fowler's done, what Ross did. Loving the way their Cubs continue to play here this season. He's just strolling almost halfway down the line. Runner goes from first. Ground ball to the right side. And that will be the inning. A run in on the home run by David Ross. One to nothing Cubs at the end of five. A day, as we mentioned, that began with the passing of Jose Fernandez at the tender age of 24. And now the most beloved golfer ever, Arnold Palmer. It has been learned that he has passed away tonight at the age of 87.
Watch the drive to the pennant with MLB.TV Premium. Watch every out-of-market game live in HD on more than 400 supported devices and enjoy a free subscription to Adbat Premium, the number one app for live baseball. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.TV. So on a day where the games have been overshadowed at times by other events within the sports world, this game goes on into the sixth inning. One to nothing, the Cubs lead. As Jose Martinez takes just outside ball one from John Lester, who has allowed just one hit tonight. It was a one out double off the bat of Yadier Molina back in the second. That's the only base runner. So Lester has set down 11 in a row. He's faced one above the minimum so far. And Lester's been on a tremendous roll in his last seven starts. He's allowed coming into tonight. He's allowed a total of four earned runs. He has not allowed more than one earned run in any of those seven. That is second half of 2015 Jake Arietta like right there. Yeah, 146 earned run average in the second half of the season for John Lester. And there's just the second hit of the night for the Cardinals. Well let's take a look at why Lester has been so dominant this season and in the second half it's command of all his pitches fastball four seam at the top of the zone the two seamer down at the bottom of the zone the cut fastball which has been such a weapon there's the curveball and the changeup well located at the bottom of the zone all his different types of fastballs the occasional change in the curveball on point again tonight and in a really Good stretch of games for John Lester as they get ready to head into the postseason. Carlos Martinez showing bunt. And he gets it down out in front of the plate. Ross up with it. Throw to second. They get him there. They do not get Martinez at first. And right away, Jose Martinez at second is telling the Cardinal dugout, have a look at that one. And with the naked eye, uh, he felt pretty sure that he was safe. And with the naked eye, I think he might have been right. Yeah I think he's right. It's a good job by Ross of being aggressive and going after the lead runner. And I think. Maybe a mistake by Russell here in in holding it a little bit too long unless he is indeed out because I feel like Ross was throwing saying I think we can get Carlos Martinez running down the line even if I throw it to second but because it was so close Russell held his position on the bag and he felt like Martinez was going to be safe maybe he comes off of the bag he's safe the Cardinals are having a look at it CB Buckner and Field and Culberth have the headsets on over near third base you know at first glance I felt like Russell should have come off the bag just because it felt like he was going to be safe to me to try and get the run at first. But that play is so close. I think he had to do it the way he did. And this is a big part of the Cubs defense. And what Joe yep. Madden told us today is this bunt defense. They want to be more aggressive. And Dan, you mentioned it on that day off, this is what they want to do. They want to go after the lead runner. They do it here because it's in their mindset. But David Ross, even though it's a poorly executed bump because it's right in front of home plate, he's got it all in front of him. So in his mind, he wants to be aggressive. He wants to go after the lead runner. But Martinez is clearly safe at second. Give, give Carlos Martinez credit, too, for getting down the line so that Russell was not able to either turn this or at least get one out if he is indeed safe. That set's coming off. And safe at second is the call. So the Cardinals win that one and it'll be runners at first and second with nobody out. Fielder's choice is the scoring. Call is overturned. First and second, nobody out for Matt Carpenter. The Cardinals remember a game back of the Mets for the first wild card spot of the National League and a virtual tie with the Giants. They have played two fewer games than the Giants. Giants are 82 and 74. Cardinals are 81 and 73. 
Carpenter denied a fly ball and a strikeout. And Javi Baez down at third base respecting the bunt and, and putting himself in a position that if Carpenter does bunt here he's in in kind of that bunt defense mode. A look back by Lester and Carpenter a check swing bouncer to third to second one on the first double play. Great job by Baez here. It's hit so softly that sometimes your instinct is to go take the lead runner, but he's understanding this ball gets to me hurt in a hurry. I know I'm going to be quick and be able to get a lot on this throw to second base, and Russell does the rest, and it turns into an easy 5 6 3 double play. And Lester loving that. Something he's seen a lot this year. So two down and a man at third now for Steven Piscotti. Laces it foul down the left field line. Joe Madden talked about Javier Baez in glowing terms defensively before the game and referenced his throwing a couple of times and said he can make any throw, any position, any throw. And that throw that he made to the bag at second was right on the money. Yeah, and we saw him earlier in the game get off balance at third base on a ground ball to him and kind of throw off his heels and still throw accurately with a ton on it. Almost hits Piscotti. One ball, one strike. He is an elite defender. One one. Ground ball to third. Another opportunity for Baez, and that's the inning. Good cut defense on display again this half inning, and they've still got a one to nothing lead. ESPN, welcome back to Wrigley Field. And Schulman, Aaron Boone, Jessica Mendoza, Buster Olney with the Cubs leading the Cardinals one to nothing. The day beginning with many in the baseball world waking up to the tragic news of the passing of Jose Fernandez at the tender age of 24. Died in a boating accident along with two others, two friends of his in the early morning, in the early hours of this morning off Miami Beach. 
Uh, tributes to him in this ballpark every other ballpark around baseball moment of silence here before the game tonight the Marlins game canceled today they're back home against the Mets tomorrow night. Carlos Martinez who's on the mound for the Cardinals tonight has Jose Fernandez initials and number 16 on his cap he was a friend of Fernandez's he also has a tribute to Oscar Tavares who passed away a couple of years ago 18 and OT on the other side. The Cubs have a jersey honoring the memory of Fernandez. A Cub jersey with a number 16 and his name on it in their dugout. And tributes pouring in from around baseball all day long. As you see the Fernandez jersey hanging in the first in the third base dugout rather here at Wrigley Field. Two and two the count on Ben Zobrist. And that's just low for a full count. We're going to bring you more perspective momentarily on Jose Fernandez. Pedro Gomez is standing by in Miami. Pedro from Miami, a Cuban American. Jose Fernandez, of course, playing for Miami. Born in Cuba, Zobris drops one into left field, a base hit. Zobris heading for second. And in there as the throw sails over the bag. Well, the leadoff man in scoring position for the Cubs. Let's take you down now. To Miami, as we bring in Pedro Gomez. Pedro, as we mentioned, uh, your connection, your context on this situation is unique. What is the mood? What 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 do you feel now, having gone down to Miami today? Dan, I can tell you that uh, I've gotten messages all day long from my friends who have still live here in Miami, and the community is numb over this news. Basically, they they cannot believe it. It's still just so quick to have happened and at such a tender age and and I can tell you Dan that that you know being Cuban American having grown up here in Miami any time that any Cuban succeeds in this country we all feel like we're a part of that I, I could tell something's going on in the game if you need to it's OK the ball was just foul the, no the ball just foul the crowd uh, ooing and eyeing but I think okay. it's a great point that you make that for those of us but, but uh, yeah. Who don't understand that? How tell us how tight knit the Cuban American community is, especially in Miami. I mean, Dan, this is the the largest congregation of congregation of Cubans outside of Havana in the world here in Miami. Um, I grew up here. I can tell you, like I was trying to say there, that you know, any time that any Cuban succeeds in this country, everybody in the community here feels like they have a little piece of it along with them. It's it's really really Im okay. Go ahead, Dan. The noise you hear as we're trying to balance the two things at once is the Cubs have asked for a review and you can see that it sure looks like this one's going to go over the overturn. Absolutely. This one will go in the Cubs direction and this one shouldn't take very long at all. So we'll keep an eye on the ruling but we want to get back down uh, to Pedro. Pedro can you tell us can you give us some context for those of us not in Miami on a regular basis what did Jose Fernandez mean not just in the Cuban American community but the work he you know his love for kids and the work he did in the city yeah. that's something we've heard about a lot today. I mean everybody knows that Giancarlo Stanton has the largest contract in baseball and a lot of people think he is the face of the Marlins and to a degree he is however only Jose Fernandez can straddle both sides of South Florida. And by that I mean that he can speak English to the English fans and he can speak Spanish to all the Spanish fans that live here in South Florida. So to a larger degree it's really arguable and you could really say that Jose Fernandez is truly the face of the Miami Marlins because he can speak to both sides of the community down here and he's such a benevolent person when he won National League Rookie of the Year he got a twenty thousand dollar bonus for winning that and he immediately turned it over to a charity here in Miami for this little girl and it immediately just drew everyone even closer to him and Dan just to bring back that point I was trying to make I'm guessing it's a home run by, by the roar of the crowd. Well they, they have overturned the foul ball called it a double so yeah. Russell kind of oh. a bizarre scene Russell just jogged from home plate right by the mound out to second. Zobris now being allowed to come home from second so it's an RBI double to make it two to nothing. On Pedro 
you talk about and, and yes, Jess. his influence, obviously, in the community, but even within baseball, especially amongst a lot of Cuban players, whether younger or older, and you think about his age, 24 years old. I know Aledmus Diaz here with the Cardinals, a big influence. But what have you yeah. seen he has done within baseball, especially a lot of the Cuban baseball players? You know, it's such a tight knit group, especially with the large number of players who have defected just within the last five to 10 years. And they really have clung together because it is such a small group. It's a lot like the Cubans here in Miami. Look, this is a recent immigrant group that has arrived in the U.S. You know, you have your Italians, you have your Germans, you have everybody that arrived well over 100, 150 years ago. The Cubans only started arriving here in the U.S. in the early 1960s after the takeover of communism in Cuba. And so really there's, there's only a million of us that are here in the U.S. When you consider there's well over 300 million Americans, it's a really tight-knit community. And I, I was trying to explain that, you know, any time that any Cuban succeeds here in the U.S., whether it be Andy Garcia, Gloria Estefan, Jose Fernandez, the entire community feels like they have a little piece of that as well because it's one of us, so to speak, that has succeeded. And that, that really brings home what has happened here with Jose Fernandez because he is such a superstar within the game. And to lose him at such a young age, I, you know, speaking to people just here, I'm in Little Havana at Versailles uh, restaurant and, and on Calle Ocho, 8th Street, which is the heart of Little Havana, and people are numb over this. They just cannot believe it that this has happened to, like I said, the face of the franchise, and it means so much more because he plays for the Miami Marlins. It's one thing, look, when El Duque was, was you know, winning World Series for the New York Yankees, that was great, and everybody here loved that because he was a Cuban who was succeeding, but he played for New York. This is a case where this young superstar was playing for the hometown team in Miami, and it meant so much more to the people here. Well, the question was asked of uh, various members of the Marlins management team this morning at their press conference, how long or how do you get over this or how long do you get over this? I, I, and, and Pedro, you've made the point eloquently. Uh, I don't know that they ever get over this. The community, the organization, this is a, yeah. uh, a huge star who was lost tragically at a very young age. Pedro, we, uh, we thank you for your time and uh, look forward to your coverage over the next couple of days. All right, Dan. See you guys. Thanks, Pedro. Pedro Gomez down in Little Havana. Baez with a ground ball to third, and he is retired for the second out. Two to nothing, Chicago, and David Ross figures to get another healthy ovation right now. Hit a home run his last time up, last regular season home game for the Cubs. And now they're going to intentionally walk him with John Lester on deck. The only thought I have is I wonder if David Ross remembered to set his DVR before he came to the ballpark today. Because yeah. three ovations, a curtain call, and a home run so far. I think the Cubs got that covered. You for think so? That's they got a video guy? Yeah. yeah. They got it covered. Well, you can't blame them for the strategy. The pit, there are two outs, and the pitcher's on deck. And although Lester swung the bat better this year, he's a, a weak hitting pitcher. This makes all the sense in the world, and gives us a chance, though, to go back to his last at bat and show you why he got that curtain call. Well, something that not many hitters do against Carlos Martinez from the right side, and that's take him deep. It was intended to be a slider on that corner, and it just kind of hung in the part of the plate. As we touched on, he had a homer on a fastball back in St. Louis in May, and now a hanging slider and a curtain call in his final regular season home game at Wrigley Field. So Russell at second, Ross at first, two nothing. Big swing and a miss by Lester. He wanted to make him pay. That's <laughs> <Yeah>. what. <laughs> Lester's hitting 089 this year, five for 56. He has grounded out and struck out tonight. Martinez is over 100 pitches. 
Lester hit it well but was late. And the bullpen has been busy for the last couple of minutes for the Cardinals down the right field line. Better been right header Jonathan Broxton ready if needed. Again hit it well but again just late. Could be last batter either way here for Carlos Martinez. Whether he gets him or not. Strike three call with a backdoor breaking ball, and that'll end the inning. A run in, two men left on. The Cubs lead two to nothing at the end of six. American League Wild Card game a week from Tuesday, October the 4th. You can see it on TBS. The next night, we will bring you the National League Wild Card game Wednesday the 5th. Obviously, at a site to be determined. Could be St. Louis if the Cardinals play well, can get it, get that first wild card spot. Right now, if the season were to end today, it would be at City Field in New York. The weather is changing, the wind has reversed direction. It's gusting a little harder right now. We might have a very light mist going on right now. We told you off the top of the show that we had been told that weather was a definite possibility later on in the night. It is later on in the night. Johnny Peralta leads off the seven for the Cardinals. Peralta 0 for 2 a ground ball and a strikeout. Just two hits on the night for St. Louis a second inning double by Yadi or Molina and a sixth inning single by Jose Martinez. It has been another great night for John Lester looking for his 19th win of the season. That would match a career high. A guy who's had a lot of success in the postseason and figures to be a big, big part of what the Cubs are trying to accomplish this year in the playoffs. And he got him. Strikeout number seven. Looking ahead to the postseason. This is the popular thinking right now. John Lester and Kyle Hendricks, who are two and one in the majors in ERA in that order, both with sparkling home ERAs, as you can see. If Jake Arrieta is your game three starter, you got yourself a pretty good rotation. Oh, oh yeah, the game four starters won a couple of clinchers in the World <laughs> Series. So uh, it looks like Jason Hamill, who's won 15 games, has had a good season, was knocked around yesterday. Looks like he'll probably be the odd man out 
in the rotation. But if you're Joe Madden, you sleep soundly at night with that kind of a, a foursome going into the playoffs. You do, and we just saw Jake Arietta there on the bench. And there's Moss with a fly ball to left center, two down. And Jake Arietta, who's had another great season, but has had some control issues the second half of the season, walking some guys. We were here Friday for the game, and he was outstanding. Ten strikeouts, just one walk, really in command of what he was doing. And Joe Madden on his way to the mound has yet to signal. Carl Edwards Jr. is up in the pen talking to David Ross. You know Lester doesn't want to come out of this game. Is Ross, is coming, Ross out? coming out? Is he going to get uh, Ross one more ovation? How wow. about that? Wow. How about that? A very classy move by Joe Madden to get David Ross one last ovation here in his final regular season home game. You saw Yadier Molina applauding, respecting Ross, and the crowd just can't get enough. Another curtain call. Wilson Contreras now catching. The lead that the Cubs have, the fact that they have clinched everything they can clinch in the National League, affords Joe Madden the opportunity to do things like that, and that was done very well. Yeah, and you. A little bit of a passing of the torch there, you know. David Ross has been catching John Lester for several years going back to to Boston and now the last couple of years here in Chicago but now Wilson Contreras who is as up a coming a young player and catcher as there is him coming out and kind of David Ross handing him off to you've got him now. And guys the Cubs front office in their meetings they say you know what we want to be the best at everything putting together a team the way we treat our players. Tonight's a pretty good night. And the emotion evident on the face of Ross, and it has been all night long. Three at bats, three standing ovations. One curtain call after the home run, and another standing ovation and curtain call when he was lifted from the game moments ago. But I mean, that's a good indicator of what kind of teammate, what kind of guy, and what kind of impact. David Ross has had on this organization to get that kind of treatment as a guy who plays once or twice a week shows you how much they think of him. I can't think of another example like him where a guy as you say plays once or twice a week and gets this kind of treatment. This doesn't happen a lot. Right. And not even within the team the organization but this entire stadium yes. that by the way is packed. Yep. Everyone on their feet recognizing the moment. A flare will drop into shallow right. That's a base hit for Molina, his second hit of the night. Good effort by Hayward, but a strider too short. You know, it's another sign when you look at this team. 
you know with them being so far ahead sometimes you look for signs of complacency are they resting on their laurels or they kind of cruising into October there has not been a shred of evidence in the games that we've been here about. No and it's that evidence has been there again tonight in the little things the outstanding defense they play the way they run the bases Ben Zobris taking advantage of a little bobble in left field to get on second base last inning. Dexter Fowler with kind of a sneaky steal of third. They just do so many little things well, and is why they're headed for 100 plus wins. And I asked a member of the front office that question recently how do you guys keep that edge through September? And the answer was quick oh, David Ross will take care of that. <laughs> I think the guy who appreciated that moment the most was David Ross. I think number two was John Lester, who probably saw Joe Madden coming out to the mound and said, Yeah. <laughs> what are you coming to get me for, Skip? I'm doing okay out here so far tonight. He never wants to come out of a ball game. Something tells me he might have known that was coming. Yeah. <laughs> the grin on Anthony Rizzo's face yeah. as Joe Madden was walking out. Popped up foul. Let's take a look. Let's see if we can peer into the mind of John Lester as as Madden's making his way out. Yeah, he doesn't look happy. He might not know. I don't think he knew. <laughs> he's not even looking Joe in the face. Either that, he's got a great <laughs> poker face. Outside two and two. You know the interesting part of now this is it's a two run game. Jed Jerko with a lot of powers that tying run. The guy throwing the sh a shutout. It's great that you're able to do that and honor certain players, but you're at a pivotal point of the game and you broke the rhythm a little bit. Check swing and the breaking ball misses low. The count is full. So Molina will be on the move on the pitch Rizzo telling Lester he's going to come off the bag play behind the runner now. A lot of fun for the Cubs but an incredibly important game for the Cardinals. There goes Molina 3 2 up and away ball four. Carl Edwards Junior throwing in the pen for the Cubs. And here comes Joe Madden again, and that's going to be all. There's the signal, and he wants the hard throwing right hander Edwards, and now it'll be John Lester's turn to get a nice ovation.
first in the postseason. MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. Enjoy game day, live game video highlights, stat cast news, and more. Get MLB.com at bat on your favorite device now. The Cubs go to the bullpen for right hander Carl Edwards Jr. 2 0 Chicago. First and second for the Cardinals with two down here in the top of the seventh. And the batter is Randall Gritchick 0 for 2. And that's what Edwards can do. Get it up there at 96. And he has been a strike thrower and really has earned himself a significant role in this bullpen. That ERA. As high as it is, which isn't high, just based on one bad outing. But you see a .8 whip, but excellent fastball curveball com combination. Out in front of Gritchick going two. Gritchick thought this was just off the edge, and according to K Zone, it does look like it's just off. Contreras frames it, pretty well located pitch, but perhaps a ball or two off. And guys you get the feeling right now. Cardinals would love it. Oh, obviously because yeah. there's so much go there. There's so much on the line for them. But also like. All right enough of the party and the celebrating and the holding up the game with your tributes. Let's deliver a blow. Yep, they're playing. For a spot of the postseason here over the next week every game matters so much for them. And then Randall Gritchick, you've got a guy that's been hot, a guy with power, and that has gotten a lot of big hits in the second half of the season for this Cardinal team. The one two. Good stop wow. there by Contreras. That was a tough pitch yeah. to keep in front of him. And, and he did it so athletically. Which is the most impressive part. He's almost like a cat to be able to get around it. But watch what he does. Not even just with his body, but he uses anything he can. He gets his other arm in there to keep that ball in front of him as it takes that nasty hop up. And that tiny run remains at first. Huge play by Contreras. Two two. Inning over. The Cardinals leave a couple of men on and the party continues here at Wrigley Field. It has been David Ross's night here in Chicago and the emotion evident on his face what he's feeling in his heart here tonight at Wrigley.
undeniable greatness and unstoppable drama. The 2016 postseason begins October the 4th. Go to MLB.com slash postseason for a full schedule. And don't forget, every game of the postseason can be heard on ESPN Radio. Going bottom seven here at Wrigley with a win now gusting out to right. The Cubs lead two to nothing and Mike Matheny to his bullpen for left-hander Kevin Segrist. One of the real good setup man in Major League Baseball the last couple of season. Hard thrower from the left side fastball mid 90s. Really good change up his best secondary pitch and this year he's gone more to a curveball away from the slider. He's been a guy throughout his career that's been a reverse split meaning because of that great fastball changeup combination he's really dominated righties throughout his career but at times has had struggles with lefties this year has gotten away from the slider and more to the curveball and it's helped him in that regard. One one to Fowler and he fouls it off one and two Fowler a walk a strike out of a base hit tonight he's got an on base percentage of three ninety on the season you want to talk about a guy who maybe doesn't get the as much attention as he should because of a Lester Rizzo O'Brien all the other great players this guy has been awfully important to the success of the Cubs this year three nineties a pretty big number up at the top of that lineup he's been a great player for him and you've been able to pencil him in every day he's a real center fielder so it's allowed Hayward to be his great self in right field it allows you to move guys because you've already got that center fielder in place and your leadoff hitter and he has been a glue guy for this team this year called out on strikes here to begin the inning This Chapman, his services may be called upon in the ninth inning. Two nothing, the Cubs lead in the bottom of the seventh. And here's Chris Bryant, a fielder's choice, and a couple of walks. You can see not a lot of success in his time in the big leagues against Segrist. If the Cardinals lose this game, they fall a half game behind the Giants. Giants lost earlier today, so once again, just like at the beginning of play today, they would be a half game behind the Giants. But the Mets won today. It's kind of an old joke, but you can't help but do it when the score was 17 to nothing. <laughs> Giants beat the Eagles, although as Aaron will tell me, the <laughs> Eagles beat the Steelers today, and convincingly so, in the state of now renamed Pennsylvania. There you go. In the battle of Pennsylvania. We worked on that most of the afternoon. <laughs> 17 to nothing. The Mets beat the Phillies today. So with a week left in the season. With their starting rotation in tatters right now, the Mets are a game up for the first wild card spot in the National League. As mentioned, the Mets will go down to Miami tomorrow. The Marlins will play tomorrow night. The game canceled today after the tragic passing of Jose Fernandez this morning. There will be baseball in Miami tomorrow night. The Mets will be there as Bryant is called out on strikes. Then the Mets will finish with the Phillies. Let's take a look at the uh, the closing schedules for the three teams in question. The Mets going to Miami and Philly, San Francisco. Tuesday will begin a series against Colorado. We'll finish up at home against the Dodgers. The Cardinals do not have a day off like the other two do. They go home for four with the Reds, three with the Pirates. By the way, just seeing the, the Dodgers name up there, we haven't talked about this tonight. Today was Vin Scully's last home baseball game, calling Dodger games. Uh, he will call the last three games of the season at San Francisco. And if you saw the story, the letter he wrote to the fans and so forth, he talked about when he was a young boy in Brooklyn and became a baseball fan. The game on Sunday will be 80 years to the day from the day that Vin Scully says he walked past a store with a radio playing, I believe it was a. Must have been a World Series game in October, October the 2nd, 80 years ago. So Vin Scully will broadcast his final game 80 years to the day from the day he says he fell in love with baseball. Kind of cool. What a magical day, too, 80 years ago. You think about fate and all the things that could have happened. And obviously, Vin Scully, one of the best. We've been so blessed to hear him. 
Rizzo hits a weak tapper up the first baseline and stays fair. And that's the inning. The Cubs go in order. We're at the end of seven, and the Cubs still lead two to nothing. Presented by Taco Bell. Grab any $5 box at Taco Bell and you could win PlayStation VR. And in part by Falcon Tires, the official tire of Major League Baseball. And Voya Financial, changing the way you think of retirement. It's been an emotional night for David Ross. Multiple standing ovations and curtain calls hit a home run in his final regular season home game. Retiring at the end of the year. The Cubs lead two to nothing going to the top of the eighth. Carl Edwards Jr. is back on the mound. He struck out Randall Gritchick to end the seventh, stranding a couple of runners. He faces Jose Martinez here to begin the eighth. And we may have some changes coming up this inning. We've got a pinch hitter on deck for the Cardinals. And we've got two pitchers warming for the Cubs. And one thing Joe Madden told us before the game when we asked him you know what's on your to do list over the next eight days or so as you see Matt Adams out on deck in the pitcher spot. He says he wants to put some of his players pitchers position players whatever in situations they may encounter in the postseason which makes perfect sense obviously and, and so even if the actual W and L isn't that meaningful to the Cubs on any given night he's trying to set them up. For what they may encounter in October. So when Adams comes up, we may see the lefty Wood come in, and then at some point we could see Justin Grimm come in later on this inning. And the reverse. I, I wouldn't be surprised if some pinch hitters come in, matchups uh, situationally. He talked about Tommy Lastella and Miguel Montero, their strengths and weaknesses depending on who pitches for the Cardinals. But coming in, what could be a postseason possibility, they, a bench role coming into pinch hit. Adams has been announced and as speculated Joe Madden on his way to the mound and he will make a pitching change. It looks like he wants the righty though. It looks like Grimm's coming in.
John Anderson and a, a tragic day in sports beginning with the passing of Jose Fernandez early this morning that will be covered extensively as will the news that broke later on this evening the passing of Arnold Palmer at the age of 87 also we'll look at all the action around the majors the NFL and more Sports Center at night next on ESPN and also streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN so here is right hander Justin Grimm in to face the left hand hitting Matt Adams with the lefty Travis Wood ready out of the bullpen looking like he expected it was him who was going to come in well and I think in a normal situation it would be the case Wood would have come in because he knows he's got Adams pinch hitting here with the lefty Carpenter on deck but this is one of those situations that I think Joe Madden's talking about and you might be in a different spot or a different situation or we may have already used a guy that comes up in the postseason. He's confident Justin Grimm can get lefties out and giving him that opportunity here. But normally Grimm dominant against righties Wood dominant against lefties the, that would be the typical matchup. And it looked like Chris Basio just phoned down to the bullpen. He spoke to the bullpen coach Lester Strode, who said something to Wood, and now Wood sits down. Well, we did uh, between innings. We started scribbling a little bit. You've got the four starters that we discussed a little bit earlier. It looks like Hamill will be the odd man out in the bullpen. Chapman is a lock. Rondon is a lock. Strope is a lock. Wood is a lock. And Edwards figures to be a lock with the way that he's pitching. So now you're up to nine. Most teams in the playoffs cut down by one pitcher. You've got some extra off days, so you can go from 12 to 11. So you're already at nine, and we haven't mentioned Hamill, a 15-game winner. Joe Smith, a veteran guy, acquired in a trade. Justin Grimm on the mound right now. Mike Montgomery, a very versatile and effective left-hander. Trevor Cahill, who's had some big moments out of the bullpen, the Cubs the last couple of years. They don't have nearly enough spots for. I mean they've got good problems right now. It's nice problems the Cubs have trying to figure out who they're taking into October with. And, and I think a lot of it will come down because those are all really good options to have. You know who who becomes who is your opponent. You know how do the numbers kind of match up and what are the matchups you can envision with those extra guys that are kind of competing for those final spots. But definitely good problems for Joe Madden and the Cubs to have. And you can change your roster from one series to the next. 2 2, a swing and a miss, and Adams is gone, one down. And that's a past test for Justin Grimm. And Joe Madden has mentioned that the curveball plays so well against lefties for Grimm. So even though he does very well against righties, this is a test, I believe, in postseason how well he can do with the breaking ball in particular against these left handed batters. And case one, Matt Adams. It worked. So now Matt Carpenter. Runner at first so Carpenter representing the tying run here with one out in the eighth inning. A pivotal game for the Cardinals and Carpenter having a miserable time here in Chicago hitless in the series. No longer base it into right field. Martinez around second on his way to third and the throw is cut runners on the corners for St. Louis. Good job by Car Carpenter here of being aggressive early hunting a pitch and getting a breaking ball that doesn't really do much at all it stays up and Carpenter pounds that ball into right field good job by Hayward here of getting to it quickly cutting it off keeping that time run off second and that double play still in order. And now Chris Basio the pitching coach on his way to the mound. Nobody up in the bullpen. Wood sat down moments ago. So at least for the next two batters, you would figure Piscotti and Peralta, right handed batters, it's Justin Grimm's inning. You guys think that maybe there are people with the Giants and Mets who prefer that Joe just go with the regular matchups? <laughs> I think that's possible. I think they'd like to see lefty versus lefty and righty versus righty and that sort of thing. But Grimm faces two lefties, got the first, gave up a hit to the second. Now he gets a couple of right handers. 
It's a fine line sometimes that managers of teams who are into the postseason face. You know, Joe Madden said before the weekend that he, quote, is going to play it straight in this series because the Cardinals are contending. But it's a balance between wanting to get your own team ready for the playoffs as you deem fit versus playing it straight against another contending team. And ultimately, getting your own team ready trumps all. Woods back up, and the right hander is Felix Pena. Pena Gao got called up August the 19th from Triple A. There's no mystery about the ninth in a safe situation for the Cubs if Joe Madden is playing it straight. Everybody knows that Aroldis Chapman gets gets that inning, and he's been doing his thing as a member of the Cubs. The big trade, everybody wondered if they were going to make it at the deadline. They did. Gave up a lot to get him, but they got one of the best. And you can see Chapman has a, a tribute to Jose Fernandez on his cap as well, his initials and his jersey number. Yes he did. And another great job by Wilson Contreras of blocking another ball in the in the dirt a big strikeout for the second out but keeping that force play in order and keeping the tying run from getting to second base a breaking ball in the dirt that's Grimm's out pitch he trusts his catcher great job by Contreras of just deadening that ball and keep it in front and as you can see Piscotti definitely did commit the Cardinals now 0 for 6 tonight with runners in scoring position most of their chances have come in the last couple of innings John Lester didn't give him much tonight here's Johnny Peralta 0 for 3 very good numbers in his career against Grimm. Tying run at first, go ahead run at the plate. And they're on their feet again. Breaking ball, a little bit up and in. You see Wilson Contreras kind of telling him to calm down a little bit. 0 2, sometimes you try and make too nasty of a pitch, and oftentimes you end up with a non competitive pitch or worse, a mistake. He's fortunate that didn't hang in the strike zone and turn a 2 0 lead into a 3 2 ball game with an 0 2 mistake. Pena and Wood ready if needed. Joe Madden contemplating his options if Grimm can't finish the inning. Left hand hitting Brandon Moss would be next. One and two the count. And he bounces in a breaking ball. Jose Martinez at third. You saw Matt Carpenter, the potential tying run at first, but two down here in the eighth inning. The Cardinals hoping to move a half game ahead of the Giants as opposed to falling a half game behind them. Two two. Up and away, full count. And now Carpenter will be on the move from first, and Rizzo trying to get Grimm's attention, telling him. Where he's going to play. Here's the way it looks right now in the National League wildcard race. The Mets with a lopsided win over the Phillies today. The Giants lost 4 to 3 to the Padres. Three teams, only two spots.
3 2. Liner to center field, down for a base hit. Martinez in to score. Carpenter to third on the RBI single, and the Cardinals are on the board. Great job of hitting by Johnny Peralta. He's come up in these spots so many times in his career, and after falling behind 0 2, he just takes pitches, takes pitches, finally gets himself into a decent count running it full and finally gets a pitch that he can handle a little bit off the end you see the bat shatter but the good approach back through the middle and the Cardinals playing a little first to third game as they cut the lead in half. Grimm stays to face Moss. Moss over three. So Justin Grimm is being given an extended opportunity here to try to work his way up the ladder, if you will, vying for a spot on the postseason roster on this deep Cubs pitching staff. And that's, I feel like there's a little bit of deception for these lefties in picking up the breaking ball. Peralta did set such a good job within that at bat, not swinging at all at the breaking ball, sitting on the fastball, and right now. With Brandon Moss, and we saw the same. The strikeout to Matt Adams. Carpenter can get well down the line. Baez playing a ways off the bag because Moss is a left handed batter. They play him to pull. Foul back, and it's one and two. Better than 40,000 here at Wrigley, and they've been standing up, sitting down all night long, back on their feet right now. Moss with a drive to center field, but Fowler is there, and the inning is over. Grim bent, but he didn't break. Cubs two, Cardinals one. Today, with tributes and honoring the memory of Jose Fernandez, who was killed in the early hours of the morning in a boating accident, uh, 
Yasiel Puig hanging a jersey. You know, an assessment is hanging a jersey. A, a tweet from Yasiel Puig. Hermano, forgive me for my Spanish. Hermano, brother, wherever you are, you know how much I loved you. Sin palabras, no words. My heart is with the families. Echoing the sentiment that was has been heard around baseball today. Again, our condolences to the, the families of Jose Fernandez and the, the other two men who perished in the boating accident earlier today. Our sympathies to the Marlins organization as well. 24 years of age, and David Sampson, the president of the Marlins, said it. Usually, the talent overshadows. The personality, but it and but the personality was so big it was right up there with the talent. I mean, Jose Fernandez, I think without question, everybody believed would have gone on at some point to win a Cy Young or multiple Cy Youngs. He was that good. The stuff was that electric. Yet the tributes that are pouring in as Zobras singles into left center, his third hit of the game. The tributes that are are pouring in are more about Fernandez the person than Fernandez the player, and that speaks to the. The mark that he left on a lot of people in the Miami community, the Cuban American community, and around baseball. Here's Zach Duke. One of those trade deadline acquisitions for the Cardinals, valuable left handed reliever. On for the 78th time between the White Sox and the Cardinals, that real good ERA. On to try and keep it a one run game here for the Cardinals. Fastball slider, cutter change. Zobras to board to begin the bottom of the eighth. Seventh hit of the night for the Cubs. They are up two to one on the Cardinals as they bat here bottom eight. Addison Russell, the batter, had an RBI double his last time of his 94th RBI on the season as he bounces one down towards the Cub bullpen. And there's activity in that Cub bullpen right now. But we're past the point now of Pena and Wood. It's a Roldis Chapman time heading to the ninth inning. The ninth inning, if you ask people in the first half of the year, okay, find a weakness. The one thing more people said than anything else, if you could find one, was, well, Ninth inning, do they have? And Rondon's had some very good numbers, has been a good closer. But this puts Rondon back in the eighth, a strope if he's healthy, and he appears to be back in the seventh and gives them an absolute lockdown closer. Well, I wouldn't say it was the ninth inning because Rondon's yes. been great and yeah. was great yeah. up until the point of the trade. So it's it's just the back end depth. Right. Right. Carl Edwards Jr. hadn't really emerged in the kind of role he is yet. Now all of a sudden he's in the mix, Rondon and Strope. It's now another strength, I believe, for this team heading into the postseason. And an underrated trade was Mike Montgomery coming over along with, with Chapman and what he's added to that depth because it really was those middle innings. If any of the starters got in trouble, sixth, seventh inning, and, and getting that bridge to Strope, to Rondo, now Chapman. They've just added with both Montgomery and Chapman. Well, the front office recognized what you were talking about, Dan, which is why they're willing to pay real retail price to the Yankees. Right. They wanted to have Chapman for their ninth inning. They didn't want another team to get him. Well, to say it has been a while between championships is an understatement. They've got a team built to win. They're good enough to win this year. That's obvious. That's another understatement. They've been the class of baseball just about the entire season. So Theo Epstein, Jed Hoyer made the move. Got the guy. And I don't know if a president or a GM is ever quite relaxed looking at his baseball team, but they got to be more relaxed than most. The October can be a crapshoot. Being the best team during the regular season it guarantees you nothing. More often than not, it is not the team with the best record that wins because so much can happen. There's so much unpredictability in October. But boy, these guys look like they're going to be tough to beat. Duke staring down the runner who is not going and it's ball four.
There is still lots to be decided over the final week of the season in terms of uh, in terms of who's getting in who's not where they finish. We got some games coming for you this week Tuesday night Red Sox and Yankees on ESPN 2 you'll see the Indians and Tigers twice Wednesday night and Thursday afternoon the Tigers suffering a big defeat so they've got their work cut out for them now and the Giants lost today they will host the Rockies on Wednesday night the Giants battling the Cardinals and the Mets for two spots in the National League wild card race. Just to back up the point about the team with the best record since 1990 Elias tells us only four teams with the best record in the majors have gone on to win the World Series so 1990 through 2015 no World Series in 94 so 25 years inclusively from 90 to 15 no 94 and only four times as the team with the best record in baseball in the last 25 years won the World Series. 98 Yankees, 07 Red Sox, 09 Yankees, 2013 Red Sox. That's the beauty of sport, and it goes across all sports. I mean, ask the Golden State Warriors. I mean, ask throughout the NFL. I mean, just because the best team in the regular season, it's such a, a beautiful thing and a different thing once you get into the postseason. Hayward bunts it foul. You know, especially with the. I mean the added series I guess it's not added anymore since it's been with us for so long now but to have to win three series and the first one being a best of five which I mean the cliche of anything can happen in that it really can I mean all of a sudden this Cubs team that has been so dominant had such a good second half you're sitting there you got four days off a wild card team comes in and, and beats you in a game one situation. Bunt is popped up, but it will drop. Well, because the wild card team generally uses its ace right. in the wild card game. So if they can somehow steal game one, they've got their ace going yep. in game three. Correct. But then again, the Cubs likely will have Jake Arrieta yeah. going in game three. So no doubt. That's you know, 18 game winner looked great last time out, reigning Cy Young guy. I would think though if you gave the Cubs some truth serum they'd rather not play the Cardinals that no disrespect to any of the teams in here but their division rivals the Cardinals have played them to a standstill nine and nine nine wins nine losses on the season and Hayward asked to bunt with two strikes on him and couldn't get it done. Well it was lefty on lefty matchup so you understand the wanting to try and move a couple guys up it's been a tough year obviously and just doesn't recognize that pitch real well and just kind of stabs at it instead of you don't want to go out and bunt the ball like that you want to sit in your legs and and kind of catch it he kind of jabs at it makes it very difficult so Duke coming out and Jonathan Broxton coming in pitching change for the Cardinals comes up two to one bottom eight.
game of the Cardinals. The Cubs lead two to one. They've got runners at first and second with a one out. Broxton will face Javier Baez. It's a guy that Mike Matheny would love to see pitch well in key spots late in games, and on the first pitch, he hits Baez. Baez, or did it hit the bat? It looks like Field and Culbreth. Oh, he's asking for an appeal. Did he swing? And there's no swing. So now Bias is going down to first, but Bias is looking into the Cardinal dugout to see if the Cardinals want to appeal whether or not he got hit. Looks like he got hit right on the hand. He might have possibly cut the knob. Yeah. It did hit the knob, I think. Yeah. I think you're right, Jess. Baez is stopped halfway between home and first, holding his bat, and the Cardinals are going to ask for a review. And I think that's why Baez really wasn't going anywhere. He was yeah. a little frustrated because yeah. the ball ran in and did catch part of his hand, and he, and it's strike one. But he understands that it hit the knob, and I think he even communicated yeah, he, a little bit with Matheny. He just said that right there. And even if it hit the knob, you can get some bees in that bottom hand, can't you? Absolutely. Another look at it. I think I think it got a little piece of the hand, but definitely gets a lot of knob. Is this the third review of the night? Um, yeah. Is, yeah. That was the first pitch that Broxton threw it coming into a, the game. It was almost if Baez wanted to hit too, because after it hit him, he was upset about it, but he was clearly looking at the umpire like, ah, I'm not going to first. Back in the day, you could sell this yeah. regardless. Just Pretend. start heading to first base, and you know. But it's hard to act now when we got slow motion, and they're going to go look at it. Yep. <laughs> Turning into a rather lengthy review. On now. Are we allowed to call? <laughs> they should have every look that that we've seen. Everybody at home has seen. And the result is hit by pitch. So they did not overturn the call. The call stands, you, and Yadier Molina gestured quite emphatically. And he's talking yeah. to Field and Colbert right now, saying he can't believe it. Well, because they, they showed it up on the big screen, and that's right. what he's, he's pointing to. I think the Cardinals have a bit of a case here. Bases are loaded. One out, but again, the call on the field is extremely important because did they feel they have enough to overturn it? The call on the field was that he was hit by a pitch. I think they did. So the infield comes in now with the bases loaded and one out. Here's Wilson Contreras getting his first at bat of the night after coming on back in the seventh inning defensively for David Ross. Now remember, if Mike Matheny comes out to argue. The result of that review, he immediately gets tossed. He's got no recourse. Fly ball, right field, down the line, and dropping for a base hit. One run in to score. Now Contreras caught in a rundown. Now the runner from third breaking home. And he is going to be tagged out on the play. Russell gets tagged out between third and home. So one run scores. 
Baez winds up at third. Contreras winds up at second, and the Cubs lead three to one. Well, Baez at first base does a good job of reading that this is going to be down, but because because Russell didn't and held up more, he kind of ran him off. So then the Cardinals did a nice job of just playing a little bit of catch. Piscotty throws behind the runner at first. They get the run down and then execute on the throw to home. And now some concern out on the outfield about Piscotty. He says I'm fine, but Mike Matheny wants to make sure. Nine three four two on the put out as Piscotty's going to jog it off and see if that knee or whatever part of his leg is bothering him is okay. Had to lunge awkwardly to his left. And then stepping up on the mound didn't help issues. Well, one of the quirks here at Wrigley Field is the mound, of course, on the in the outfield that can create a lot of problems, especially for visiting players who aren't quite as familiar with it. So the end result is the Cubs get a run. There are runners at second and third, two down now. And Tommy Listella is going to come up as a pinch hitter in the pitcher spot. Left handed batter. He handles velocity well, Joe Madden says before the game. And Jonathan Broxton has velocity. Listella, another guy bidding potentially for a spot on the postseason roster. He became quite a story back several weeks ago when the Cubs sent him down. And he decided that, and, and there was no hostility involved, but. He said, you know what, if I can't play for the Cubs, I'm not sure I want to keep playing baseball. And he went home for a while and then eventually reported to Triple A Iowa and eventually got called back up to the big leagues. Had to report before uh, they would call him back up. But he's in the mix you would figure with the likes maybe of Miguel Montero, Chris Coglin uh, for an extra spot or two off the bench. I, I think Listella's going to be part of the postseason roster because of his ability in this role and because he's a. As we talked about with Joe Madden, and you mentioned he handles velocity. A 280 hitter on the season. A guy who just got caught in a numbers game earlier this season because of the depth that the Cubs have. Swing and a miss, two and two. Out in center field, Grichik is somewhat shallow and shaded over toward left center. Jose Martinez is shallow to the opposite field, mind you, against Listella. Deeper on the pull side is Piscotti and Ryan. There's a swing and a miss, and that'll end the inning. So after all that, the Cubs get one run and they lead three to one going to the nine. And it's time for the hardest throwing man in baseball. The role this Chapman will come in to face Molina, Jerko, and Grichik when we come back.
ESPN presented by Taco Bell the Cubs looking for their 99th win of the season and looking to hand the Cardinals a, a defeat here when they need every win they can get if they're going to make the playoffs and now with a two run lead going into the ninth it is time for a Roldis Chapman. Well he's been great with the Cubs an ERA just over one a strikeout per nine inning pitch over 15. And what I found interesting from the last time we had the Cubs a couple weeks ago his fastball velocity average has ticked up from a hundred point three <laughs> to a hundred point four. Wow. How's that for some postseason wear and tear. Yadier Molina leads it off for the Cardinals. Well, it just went up a little bit with the hundred one. Every Cubs fan. And Yankee fans did it and Reds fans did it looks out at the, the gun on the scoreboard after every pitch uh, Chapman throws. As mentioned earlier you can see his thoughts are with Jose Fernandez tonight he has Fernandez's initials and number on the side of his cap as a number of players do. Ground ball to short. One down. Lots of major league action coming your way this week Tuesday night it'll be the Red Sox and Yankees you can see the Indians and Tigers. Then the Rockies and Giants in a double header Wednesday night Thursday afternoon the Indians and Tigers again all meaningful games all coming your way we'll have a game for you on Friday night as well don't know exactly where yet the races will dictate that Sports Center coming up next on a day that saw the passing of Jose Fernandez and Arnold Palmer a full slate of NFL and major league action as well John Anderson. Your host for Sports Center as soon as the ball game is over. The batter Jed Jerko, two strikeouts and a walk tonight. The wind is starting to gust out to right and it is starting to mist over the ballpark again. As Chapman misses up and away to fall behind 3 and 0. The wind is really blowing right now. And it's starting to mist a little bit harder. Not a steady rain, nothing to worry about at this point. There's a strike. This is probably a situation where Jerko might take another one. Not the time run yet. Certainly going to probably get the same pitch if it does get the 3 2. High in the air to center field. On the warning track, Fowler. The Cubs and out away from their 99th win, which would be the most they have had in a season since 1935. There have been some lean years to say the least but this is not one of them. It's been a party atmosphere for the moment the season began here at Wrigley. Ninety seven wins and a trip to the NLCS last year on the verge of ninety nine wins. And with hopes as high as you can get going into October this year. The batter is Randall Gritchick. down and in at a pitch that registered at 102 miles an hour on the radar gun they show on the scoreboard here at Wrigley. Up and away. Final regular season home game for the Cubs. Contreras getting a workout. 
David Ross probably sitting in the dugout right now saying I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> let, the, let the young kid handle this. Well and think about the impact Contreras has had. He's come in and had. What three impactful really good blocks behind home plate that have. Kept a run from scoring. Kept tying runs from moving up so. Been great behind there since coming in. And the tying run is going to come to the plate. He's thrown 13 pitches, only four of them have been strikes. The batter is Jose Martinez. Runner goes from first, pitch is in for a strike. Uncontested, Grichik takes second. And Aledemis Diaz has come out of the on deck circle for the Cardinals, a young man we talked about right off the top of the show, is a very close friend of the late Jose Fernandez from childhood on. They grew up on the same street together in Cuba. Diaz obviously hit hard by the tragic passing of Fernandez earlier today. Mike Matheny said would not have been in the starting lineup even before the news of this morning was scheduled to not start this game. But if Martinez can reach Diaz will come in. Strike away. Big cut and a foul off as Martinez hangs in there and feeling some pain right now. 103 miles an hour on that fastball from Aroldis Chapman, who has thrown all fastballs in this inning. We'll see one two if maybe at some point he does mix in a slider that ball was in off the plate and Martinez out walks it off gingerly now digs back in three one Cubs with two down in the ninth inning. He's getting his rips in, isn't he? 104 on that pitch. That, that's the best Martinez has looked on it. Looked like he tracked it well, looked like he was on it. I think it's time to maybe mix in an off speed pitch to see if you can get a chase, and then if he doesn't, go back to the fastball. Fouled off another fastball. 103 on that one. It's not coming easily here this inning for Chapman. Some command issues. Martinez giving him a great fight. Jerko's ball hit very hard. The win that's coming in in favor for Chapman. One two again. Slider for strike three called and that's your ball game. Win number ninety nine for the Cubs and the Cardinals now drop a half game behind the Giants for the second wild card spot of the National League. 
a night and an entire day filled with emotion all around Major League Baseball. It began with the tragic news of the passing of Jose Fernandez of the Miami Marlins. Tributes at all bar ballparks today, including here at Wrigley Field, where he was never far from anyone's mind. David Ross enjoying a terrific night here tonight. Ovations, curtain call after his home run. John Lester, another outstanding outing, picks up win number 19 for the Cubs. They win game number 99, their most since 1935. And the Cardinals head home, needing to get hot in the last week as they try to make a run to the playoffs. Final score 3 1 Cubs for Aaron, Jess, and Buster. I'm Dan Schulman saying so long from Wrigley.